Okay, Sunday night, circumstances beyond our control. We're home Sunday night, and we're going to do continue with our Proverbs. I know we say we'll do Proverbs Monday night, but we're going to do Proverbs Monday night, but we're going to move on to where we were. So we're doing it Sunday night, and we'll move on. Proverbs 16, verse 17. And Proverbs is such a great book because every verse has great detail and it's so hard. <clears throat> Looks like we're going to do two chapters a night and sometimes may do, I mean, two. We're going to do a chapter twice, two nights. I'll catch my tongue up with me eventually. A, a chapter looks like it's going to take two nights. And it may take three or four. And it's hard to give such half a chapter a, a title because there's so much in Proverbs. And I recommend that you take a daily proverb, today being the, the fourth. Read Proverbs 4 tomorrow, the fifth. Read Proverbs 5, 6. Read Proverbs 6. It, it won't do you any harm. It'll do you much good. So Proverbs 16, 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. You want to go down God's road? Get away from evil. Get away from sin. Get away. You can get away from the consequences of sin by not sinning. That keepeth his way, preserveth his soul. And we did that last night. Pride goeth before destruction. What, what did God just say? What, what did the Holy Spirit just say? Pride equals destruction. When you are in pride, you are now down the avenue of destruction. And a haughty spirit, you know, you just, your head's in the clouds. Before a fall, you, you, your head so far up, you, you don't see the traps, the snare is coming. It's be humble before you stumble. Better it is to be of a humble spirit, opposite of pride and lofty, with the lowly, than divide the spoil with the proud. Go back to Proverbs chapter 1. This is a, one of many illustrations. Proverbs chapter 1. It says in verse 11 or verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent them not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. They ain't going to divide it equally with you. Matter of fact, if they will kill somebody to get a booty, maybe they'll kill you to get your half. And it speaks about you don't want to have fellowship, friendship, or anything with a proud man. Avoid it. The Bible says also about an angry man. He that handles a matter wisely shall find good. Whoso trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Okay, now this, we're not in the contrasts anymore. This is not a verse, well, this is the good and this is the bad. This is a verse, there's two great subjects in the verse. Sometimes they're a reference to the one, or sometimes they got two different subjects. But if you handle a matter wisely, you're gonna you're gonna get good. <clears throat> How do you handle a matter wisely? You gotta study the Bible, you gotta read the Bible, you gotta pray, you, you gotta seek the Lord, you gotta get guidance, you gotta get counselor. Now I'll tell you one thing that comes to mind. It's been something that's been bothering me today. You don't need to know, but if you got an offense with another Christian, the Bible says you don't go run to your pastor. 
I've had I've beat my back. You know, somebody said, I don't care what they said. The Bible says this is what you're supposed to do. If you want to settle a matter wisely, the Bible says you go to that person personally, face to face. You don't go running to the past. That's not handling it wisely. That's not handling it biblically. If they won't listen, you don't go run into the pastor. You go get another Christian. You you two go together. You meet the three of you. And then if he won't listen, then you take it to the church. That's handling things wisely. Gossip. Running to the pastor. Telling others. Instead of dealing with it face on face. That's not wise. You're not going to find good. And then those who trust in the Lord, you want happiness? Trust in the Lord. This weekend, the farmer's market, many people just coming up and screaming and hollering, shut up. A couple of them, I said, listen, you need to be saved. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Then you get the Holy Spirit. Then you get love, joy, peace. <laughs> oh, I'm a Christian. You ain't got the joy and peace. You're a grumpy, miserable person. That's not a Christian. Trust the Lord and happy you will be. When you put your trust out of the Lord, then your happiness goes. The wise in heart shall be called prudent. That's a very simple yet loaded information. You want to be prudent? You got to be wise in heart. What are we reading? We're reading the Bible. What is the wisdom Solomon is talking about? Bible, godly wisdom, not worldly. A man that is wise of the holy and wise of God and wise of the scriptures will be prudent. He may not be liked by the world, but he'll be loved by God. And sweetness of the lips increases learning. Now, that's not sugar-coated preaching. There are sugar-coated preachers in pulpits today, and they're doing tooth decay or Christian decay in the churches. Sweet lips. And we're not talking sugary. We're talking about lips that, you know, they have the love of God. They have the care of God. And they properly expound learning of other Christians. Paul had that sweet lips. And then yet he would be cruel, as others would say. Jesus had those sweet lips. But when he dealt with the, with the religious people, you hypocrites, you Pharisees, you... That's not sweet. Yes, it is. You're spelling it. You know, people say to me, because, you know, I'm obnoxious. I, I, I'm sarcastic. I, you know, I told a woman Saturday, why don't you just shut up? That's not sweet. Yes, it is. You're not going to take it sweet. But from my heart of preaching the gospel to people, you need to shut up and you need to listen to what I'm saying. You're taking it as offensive and cruel because no one's ever told you to shut up and listen. The world today has total opposite of what sweetness. Sweetness is, you know, you just walk around in eggshells and you don't crack the eggs and you just make everybody. That's not sweet. That's a cancer. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it. There's, there's knowledge, there's wisdom, and there's the understanding. And when you understand the holy and God and the Bible as you were to know God, the holy and the Bible, and you be wise to God, the holy and the Bible, and understanding that's life. You're not going to have life if you don't know about Jesus. Again, like I said to those, to those grumpy, miserable people that we met, I think three of them, four. You're not going to end your misery till you understand who God truly is and what God has to offer you. You may say you're a Christian. 
but your actions speak louder than what your words are. But the instruction of fools is folly. Public and private and college and university and seminaries education. We're going to teach you to make a living. There's nothing wrong with making a living, but we're going to do it without God. It's folly. We're going to teach you to do wrong and evil and call it good. That's folly. We're going to instruct you on, on, on millions of years of fossils and, and we come from apes and animals came out of water and started walking. That's folly. When the teachings are opposite of what the Bible says, it is folly. A man can go to medical school and he can learn to be a, a great surgeon and he could be saved. And he says, listen, I'm going to put my hands to a use to God that I can heal others. And majority of his classes are going to be to that man or woman. It's going to be relevant. It's going to be useful. And there's going to be something he's going to have to learn and study and take tests. He'll never use. I can't understand why a surgeon who's going to operate you has got to take English. Oh, can't, can't, I can't do an operation because I didn't, you know, I didn't use to properly use a comma. No. <clears throat> but when that man has gone to classes, you know what that Christian's going to learn in his classroom? He's going to learn things that are ungodly, uncorrect, and unbiblical. That's folly. I was dealing with this recently with one of the doctors I went to, a nurse or something. And I said, how can you not work on the human body and not have a guidance to a creator? I forgot who I said that to. I mean, you can't be in a medical field and work on the, these wonderfully, fearfully made bodies, the Bible says, and not say, hey, oh, it by accident. You mean by, by accident you got a heart doctor, by accident you got a lung doctor, by accident you got a gastric doctor, by accident you got a muscle doctor, by accident you got a woman doctor, by accident you got a head doctor, by accident you got an ear doctor. By... If it's all the same, we all come from one big lump, why don't all the doctors practice one big lump of medicine? If there was evolution, there wouldn't be different branches of medicine. And we just go to one doctor and one doctor to take it all, and we wouldn't have to have co-pays for specialists. The co-pay for the specialist, when you walk in there and say, you know, your co-pay, because you're seeing a specialist, all to tell you that we have an almighty God. And I'll tell you another thing that, that disproves evolution just came to my head right now. You bring your pet to a veterinarian, you bring your loved one to a doctor. You don't bring them to the same doctor. If we came from monkeys, why don't you take a human to the veterinarian? You mean after all these years, we still have a veterinarian doctor and we still have a human doctor and they haven't combined to be the two yet? Oh, evolution is very, very slow. I mean, those great apes that churn them in, they must, when they, they, they go, oh, veterinary, yeah, human doctor. I'm not human yet, but I said, where do I go? Hey, that's why you need insurance. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. James gives us a great thing about the mouth and the tongue. You've got to order your mouth to do right. Because if you don't watch your mouth, you don't put a lock on your mouth, you don't put a guard on your mouth, the Bible says, that mouth is going to say something that, you know what? Once the words go out, they can't come back in. I come to realize, and I tried this again Saturday. There's just some people, you know what? Just ignore what they say. You know, there was some, there was one guy who was trying, you know, the guy's trying to be an idiot. He wasn't really as, just, just shut up. I'm not, I'm not going to bother with that no more. 
There was one woman full of the devil and just tried not to, but she just kept on going. And, and I had to answer her for everyone to know, I, I, okay, you're going to throw stuff at, at me. I'm going to throw stuff back at you, biblical and what's correct. And I'm going to slip the tongue and I'm going to slip the mouth for everyone. But I'm just going to, those kind of people, I'm just going to try to ignore them now. And the adding or addeth learneth to yeah. and adding learning to his lips. Oh, that's a tongue twister. You've got to teach your mouth and you've got to learn your lips. You know what the best thing to do in a marriage? And Lisa and I did it most, and it worked. If you're angry with each other, go off to your separate room. I had, it was a couple times, I, I go downstairs and, you know, not long, and Lisa would have been down, just, just go back upstairs and say, okay, you're mad at me. Let her calm down. You don't need to be opening your big fat mouths and saying things that need not to be said. On my second marriage, the big mouth was open and it caused trouble. I'm telling you, my marriage with Lisa, and, and do, we hardly ever fought. And you don't need to fight. The Bible says, uh, be angry, let not the rap go but something with the sun down. A lot of times, if you're angry with your spouse or you're angry with your children, give it time. Because you'll be sitting there, may the Lord say, you know what? He was right. She was right. You're the one that's wrong. Or, you know what? It wasn't that big of a deal. A lot of times you get angry and get something, you know, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to lose a night's sleep because of that. Uh, there's bigger things we can lose a night's sleep of. But you gotta teach your mouth, and there's things I want to say, and someone be done. And I think it's the Lord does not shut up. <laughs> okay. Pleasant words, back to verse 23, are as a honeycomb. Honeycomb's nature's God's natural sweetener. You can put honey in your coffee more than sugar. Sweet to the soul. That's your eternal. Honey's good for allergies. Honey is, is, is it, they found honey in Egyptian tombs and they open it up and they take a, a, a little bit of, they find it still, it doesn't go bad. And it's health to the bones. You got problems with your bones? Bible says honey. I don't do much honey because the more I do honey, I get that honey and I put it, oh man, I got to have more honey. And then the Bible says, if you get too much honey, you're going to get sick. Uh-huh. That's true. I know that. I've sat in the chair. Oh, oh no. Too much honey. And it's hard because you can't get that honey that's on the grocery store shelf. You got to get the natural from the bees of your area. And the only ones I know right now totally hate the gospel and totally hate the preaching and I'm not going to give them my business no more. I won't give you my business. I know you're supposed to hate, but I'm not going to give God's money to somebody who just hates. If I'm wrong, pray for me. There is a way that seemeth right unto men, religion, science, education. We came from apes. If you follow our tradition, today it's it's widespread. Evil is good and, and, and good is evil. But the end, at the end, when it's all finished, maybe not while, maybe not in the beginning, but in the end, thereof are the ways of death. You know, <clears throat> you know the worst time ever to find out your religion is wrong? When you wake up and your eyes are being tormented in hell. 
that's the wrong thing. When that person comes to you with an open Bible and tries to tell you about Jesus, you know the wrong time to find out you were wrong and they were right in the end. When a scientist goes against the Bible, you know when the time is wrong for him? When he's standing before God, the great white throne judgment, say, uh-huh. That's what you thought it was? Let me call one of my angels that were there when I created the heavens and earth. Uh, angel, I don't know, I know what kind of name, but he calls over the angels. Yes, Lord. You were there when I created the heavens and earth. Yes, I was, Lord. You've been a faithful angel to me. You're not one angel for him. Yes, Lord. Can you explain to this moron here how I created water? You want to tell these scientists from this space agency why I didn't populate the, the planets in the universe? Because they tried to do it. You want to tell them? When that educated man stands before God, the creator, in the end, and then he casts you off into the lake of fire. And you got to realize not everybody's going to heaven. Not everybody is, loves the Lord. There are some people that are going to learn too late in life. That's sad, but that's the truth. <clears throat> when I tell you the truth with the Bible, you can get upset at me. The other day, there, there was a, uh, a, new, a news, newspaper thing on Facebook, and they're offering a, a free school lunch program to all... And I just wrote down that nothing free. Somebody pays for it. That's all I wrote. No, no scripture. And you won't believe the tax I've gotten from that. It's a true. There's nothing free. Somebody paid for it. I couldn't teach someone that either, though. He that laboreth, laboreth to turn the page for himself. You know, in actuality, when you go to work and get a paycheck, it's for you. You give money to your wife or your spouse, to your children, that's giving. When you give money to God, the church, missionaries, that's giving. You went to work for yourself. For the mouth, for his mouth. I believe that word's craveth, mark him about it of him. <clears throat> Jesus said, be content with food and raiment. Paul says, content with food with raiment. Those expensive telephones, those are no big deal. They'll get you no glory in heaven unless you use that phone for Jesus. That big fancy car over the used car that will run just as well. Listen, I used to be a tow truck driver. Porsches, I, I've been, I sat in many Porsche, Porsches as I hooked it up and put it on the flatbed to bring it to somewhere. A Jaguar. A Jaguar was another car. I've been in a lot of Jaguars. And I'm not saying they're bad cars. I'm just saying I've sat in Jaguars. I've sat in Porsche. As a tow truck driver. And I've sat in Fords and Chevys and Plymouth, more, more Plymouths, I'll say that, for towing cars. I, well, I should take that back. I did have a brand new showroom car. I had to turn that over to the bank. I didn't get to keep that. There are third, you know, they say the third world nations are, you know what they know? If I can just get some food in my mouth, I'd be pleased. I don't need a phone. I don't need expensive shoes. I don't need the finest fashion. I would just love to get some food in my mouth and a place where I can keep dry when it rains. That's what it's all about. 
even the great, and I put great, Apostle Paul writes in one of his books, he says, listen, you know what? I fasted. I've also starved. Americans and Europeans, we, you know, we got to get our money. We got expense, expenses. That's not what it's so far. An ungodly man dig it as he would for a treasure. Dig is up evil. He goes looking, searching, and labors for evil. Evil is a sin. Evil is also a consequence of sin. And evil can be sin and the consequence. There are ungodly men that go out purposely looking to sin. And with that sin, they're going to get a consequence. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You labored. There's your payment. And his lips, oh boy, we're on the lips again. Lips have got to be trouble. The lips there, I don't know why it says lips there. I mean, it would be in his lips is as. I don't know what it is, but God the Holy Spirit wanted lips there. I don't understand that. I don't understand a lot of things in the Bible. There's a point to lips there. And you need to read James chapter 3 and study James chapter 3. Is as a burning fire. Well, let's go over to James chapter 3. We'll look at one verse. I will hope you'd look at it all. James chapter 3. Hebrews James. If I had a second son, I was going to name, name him Hebrew James. My wife would not appreciate that. James 3, 6. Scripture with Scripture. Solomon had no idea what James was going to write. Now, one of James is running back to Proverbs. The tongue is a fire. Well, he's talking about tongue, but the lips. A world of iniquity. That's not good. So is the tongue among our members. That it, it, that it defiles the whole body <clears throat> and is set on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Again. Solomon had no idea what James was going to write. James maybe had an idea what, what Solomon was going to write. He says the lips are as a burning fire. Fire is destructive. We're going to come if the Lord tarries in Proverbs chapter 30. Lord tarries, we get to Proverbs 30. We're going to find out that the writer says that fire says, I want more. There are major fires on the west coast of America right now. And they've burnt, I don't know how many, I'm going to say they burnt acres. That fire is never going to say, ever. Oh, that's enough. Okay, let's die ourselves down. That fire, if given a chance, I'm not saying it's going to, but if that fire could be given, a, if it could burn across the whole United States of America, and if it can burn up into Canada, and burn into Mexico, and Cuba, and Alaska, and if it can jump over the Bering Strait into Russia, And if that fire can get on a ship in the Atlantic Ocean and travel across the ocean on that, that ship and start a fire in Europe and start a fire in Africa, it will. That fire says, I've not had enough. I want more. When your house is on fire, you don't say, okay, it, it'll go out. No, you call the fire department. And... Solomon, who has the knowledge and wisdom of God, and James, who has the knowledge and wisdom, I believe is James, the brother of John, 
who was the Peter, James, of John of Jesus' ministry, have likened the lips and the tongue as this thing that just says, I want more destruction. And there are people who will sit in a Baptist church throughout the world, both past, present, and future, to the Lord calls us all home. And there's one thing they want to do with their tongue. They want to cause destruction to others. And their tongue can burn down an entire church. And yet the walls will still be there. There are churches in places in the world today, the building's there, the roof is there, the, the, the windows are there, the doors are there, but there's no one there because someone's mouth devoured the people. Revelation chapter 19, the Lord just showed me this one. Yeah, I can learn. I still learn. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 12, <clears throat> his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes, not his tongue. Verse 15, out of his mouth goes forth a sharp sword. Christian, your mouth is to have the sword, the word of God, not the fire. Get that, know that. Christian, I'll say it again. You're to have the mouth of this word of God. You're not to have the mouth of hell. James in Proverbs, Solomon. A forward, that means wicked, vile. A forward man soweth strife. Somebody causing problems in your church? Don't call them a Christian. Call them what they are. They're wicked. What's what, what, what the Holy Spirit says to Solomon. Watch uh, chapter... Let find a chapter here. Chapter 6, verse 16. Proverbs 6.16, six things does the Lord hate. <gasps> God hates. Yea, seven are an abomination. Six God hates, the seventh is an abomination. A proud look. Hey, we talked about pride. God hates it. A lying tongue. We, oh, 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 there's the tongue again. That's what we've been talking about. The gossiping tongue, God hates it. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift to running to, to mischief. A false witness, there's the tongue again. The speaker's lies, that's the tongue. Number seven, the abomination. Soweth discord among the brethren. Go back to where we are. Over men so is strife. That's the same thing. Discord. God says that that's a wicked, vile person, and God says it's an abomination. Where do you stand with your mouth in church? I got people come up to me and they'll try to tell me other things about. I just I back off. I end the conversation. I change the subject. I don't want to hear it. A whisperer separates cheap friends. You don't want anybody else to hear. Why can't you say it out loud? Why can't you do what we've already looked at? Why can't you go to their face and say, hey, listen, I got trouble with you. Sin. You know, what, you know what I whispered to it? I remember one time I was in a church with my wife in Connecticut. 
and they were going to throw a surprise party. I'm against birthday. They're going to throw a surprise birthday party for the for the pastor. And they whispered, "Don't tell the pastor." And if he asks anything, tell him a lie, a false witness. We just read God hates that. Are you going to ruin? And are you going to ruin the fun for us? Wow. By the way, that was the pastor's wife. Don't tell him anybody. We got a surprise for him. We got a surprise for him. Don't come and tell me. And don't expect me to be a false witness. I ruined the fun, I guess. A forward men so a strife, a whisper, a separate chief friend. These are people, they're buddy buddies. And they've been broken by a whisperer. A violent man entices his neighbor. In James chapter 1, verse 14, on it, we won't go there. Isn't that what we just read in Proverbs chapter 1? Violent men, they want to kill somebody so they can get the substance. Hey, you want to come join us? <clears throat> Why are so many people involved in these riots across America? Because they're violent. Hey, you want to come join our cause? Come join us. That's biblical. In my lifetime, there's been many rioting in, America, in the streets of America. And it's never just one person. And I can imagine, hey, did you hear there's an uprising? Let's go down to the store and steal everything. Come on, come join me. What's the Bible say about that? A violent man entices his neighbor to be violent. And I guarantee there are people there, I'm a Christian. You met that guy who was cussing me out. Sorry, I'm a Christian. You know what God thinks of violence? Boy, we're looking at a lot of scripture today. Genesis. I think it's nine. And this is one of those passages. I know it's in the Bible. You know it's, I mean, you can know it's in the Bible. Can you like sort of churn there? We I mean, don't know, need to know the exact place, but if you can churn in the general area, chapter six. With nine upside down. If you can turn to the general area and find what you, that's okay. And that's, you know, and don't get used to one Bible. This this Schofield Bible is my study Bible, is my reading Bible, it is my, 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 this is my Bible. I have a street preacher's Bible. And I have a different Bible I take with me on the Friday Bible study in the park. You know what the error of having one specific Bible is when I open up the other Bibles, I think it's on the right hand side of the page and it's not there. It's on the right hand side of this Bible. That can mess you up. But uh, Genesis chapter 6. And God is talking. And he heard it. Talks about violence. There is violence in the land. Proverbs chapter, I mean Genesis chapter six. He mentions violence. Why don't sit here? I could be wrong. Let me get my supporting. I can be wrong. Genesis 6.11. Okay. There it is. 6.11. Genesis 6.11. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. You know what happened? Verse 13. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence. Through them, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. You know what God thinks about violence? God will take care of violence. He destroyed the world with water the first time. He'll destroy the world with fire. The element shall burn up. 
and he'll destroy all the violence at the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ if you're a Christian. Verse 29 of Proverbs 16 says, He leadeth him and leadeth him into the way that is not good. It's Proverbs 1, that's Genesis 6. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things and moveth his lips again to bring evil to pass. The violent man is everything about violence. And they call it all kinds of name, oppression, uh, it's race, it's, uh, you know, it's the cops are killing us, it is BLM and... No, your heart is wicked and you have come to bring other people in your... There are people that are rioting in the streets of America and not for the BLM, not because of, because of what the police done, because it's in their hearts and I am somebody important. The me, myself, and I. And they don't care about any cause but themselves. The hoary head, the gray hair, the white hair is a crown of glory. You see, a man who's got white hair, he's got gray hair. What we're talking about. A man that's aged. That's a crown of glory. That's the one the crowns Christians get. Amen. But that's not a period there, is it? I don't think so. That's not a period. We have a conditional cause of birth. If. So you can't say every gray head, white haired man we're talking about. If it be found in the way of righteousness, then it's a crown of glory. So a man that has gray or white hair that is not even saved, that verse is not for him. You got a Christian and he's old, he's got gray and white hair and he doesn't live right. He doesn't live according to the Bible. That verse is not his. You got a man who's a Christian, loves the Lord, loves the word, serves the Lord, does what he can for the Lord. He's got white and gray hair. There it is. It's a crown of glory. And that is one of the crowns that Christians will get. Of the five crowns. It looks like, according to the Holy Spirit and Solomon, if a Christian gets white and gray hair for serving the Lord and doing right in prayer and reading his Bible, while you're on this earth, if it's, if it's for righteousness, that gray hair says, hey, that's a crown of glory. And what do most people do when they, when they get the gray hairs? They, they want to dye it. Now, I got gray hairs in my beard and mustache. I dye it because it looks stupid. I got this little white circle of gray hair. And it don't look good on the video. That's why I dye it. Now, my whole mustache got gray. and My whole beard's got gray. Okay, I leave it. I got, beard, I got gray in my beard. Just that one little spot. I know, you didn't need to know that. He that is soon to angrier is better than the mighty. Slow to anger, excuse me. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He can control his anger. He gets angry, be angry, and sin not. Like I said before, we just go off in a corner, go off in another room, just calm down. Don't get excited. Deal with your children. Your children did something wrong. Just calm down. Better than the whole mighty army with swords and guns and knives. And, and he that ruleth his spirit, your life, that spirit of man, the life, 
God breathed into man, he became a living soul. That spirit of God that God put into man to be living, then he that taketh a city. There's an army that's taken a city, but if you can control your life and you can say no to that which is bad and evil and sin, and you can say yes to that is good, right, and proper. That's much better than the walls of Berlin that came down. That is much better than, than England winning World War II and not having Germany occupy them. Verse 33, last verse, good verse. You ready? The lot, the worldly word for lot would be gambling. The Bible word for Lot in Acts chapter 1, Judas has, has hung himself. He's killed himself. And one of the apostles say, well, you know, we got to find somebody for Judas' spot. It was Manassas and another man. I forget his name. And they said they cast lots. And what, what did they do? They had straws, the black ball, maybe used dice, you know, even number or odd number. Uh... Eeny, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't know. But they put these two men before the Lord. And they said, God, we don't know which man you want. And they choose a black, whatever it was, that's a lot. A farmer has a lot. I, I don't know what kind of year it's going to be. Do I plant corn or do I plant wheat? Do I plant pumpkins or do I plant peas? And that's a, that is a life decision. I got to ask God because God knows tomorrow. I don't. I don't know what crop. That's a man who owns a business. How low do I go with my bid that I don't lose my business? That's a lot. Now, we're not talking about, we're going to talk about, we're not talking Las Vegas lot, or Atlantic City lot, or casino lot. Now we will. The lot that is cast into the lap. So something something is put into a lap and you pick. And whatever you pick. But the whole dis, 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 disposing thereof is of the Lord. When they chose the apostle, I think Manasseh's one. God, whatever it was, God said, okay, Manasseh, you grab that black ball. Manasseh, you grab the short string uh, you get the even number on the dice because they said even would be manassas and odd would be uh you know hit a piano and whoever you know whoever knocks a piano get all right manassas you're the one with the stick that knocked the piano and whatever however it's done it could be done for way god speaks to that farmer i want you to grow peas because this is going to be a peas year now it says a lot Cast in the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. You go to the casino. You're at the blackjack table. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Ah, 22. Where did I get that extra one? God did it. See that? The disposing thereof of the the Lord gave you that card so you now you have twenty two instead of twenty one. You walk over to the roulette. Eighteen black. Yeah, I spin. And ends up nineteen red or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what they are. Why is it nineteen and not eighteen? Because of God. You get up off that seat. You go to the one arm bandit. You put your money in there. Pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. <laughs> cherry. Who gave you the cherry? God did. You're scratching off a lottery ticket. Seven, 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 eight. Who gave you that card? God did.
That's what it says. The lot, the gambling, is cast in the lot, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Many for that verse is a personal profit of gambling. It's not a light. There is a personal profit called gambling. There is a life changing moment for a farmer, for a contractor, for which disciple. And there will be things in a Christian's life that he will have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I have come to a fork in the road, left or right, and I have no idea. You've got to have God to give you that 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 lot, the disposing of, go left. But if you're going to take that and you're going to have a personal gain and you're going to be interested in money unfairly gotten, as we've already read in Proverbs, and that scratch-off ticket, that bingo card, that, that slot machine, the, the, the cards, the roulette table, the dice, the craps. Oh, say crap. Can't say crap. Sorry for saying crap. Christian, you lost because God had you lose. Why did God have me lose? Because he knows you would use the money ungodly. I would give to the tithes of the church. Yeah. And if that's the case, God would have had you won. No, that's not what you would have done. See, God knows you. And so many Christians lose money and they don't get to count that God had them lose the money because he's trying to teach you something. Stop gambling. But I suppose churches today, they're for gambling. Tyler, what are you talking about? We're having a church raffle. Oh, we're going to get a bunch of Christians together for a fellowship night, and, and we're going to have a, the plant is a, is a raffle. Whoever gets to win the plant. That's gambling. It's just gambling in another name. It's gambling with the, with the Jesus Christ tag attached to it. You see, we can approve of all things if we put Christ's name on it. No, you can't. We got church. We got church raffle ticket. Just give the money away. We got church bingo. See, it's in the name of Jesus. It's not gambling. Yes, it is. And it's a sin. And when you lost, God had you lose. You ought not be gambling. Life is a gamble enough.